college, I mean, I've, I've been drawing all of my life, actually, but when I kind of got serious about it and went to industrial design school, uh, first at Western Michigan University and then at uh, Kendall College of Art and Design, they, uh, they teach, a, teach a technique to industrial designers, uh, the people that draw cars and office furniture and, and products and so forth. It's best described as sort of technical sketching, if you will, and it really kind of loosens up your, uh, loosens up your abilities uh, just to get ideas down as quickly as possible. And for those, they just recommended a, a simple pen, a ballpoint pen, and white paper. We, we used stacks of copy paper, whatever we could get our hands on. I remember in college, I would go to office supply stores and just buy a gigantic ream of copy paper, and that became my, my sketchbook, if you will. But for the benefit of what we're doing here, uh, I've got the white sketchbook. So in whenever I try to draw anything, whether it's a spaceship or any, uh, any object, oftentimes it's technical, so I, uh, yeah, this goes pretty well for me. Um, I always try to establish a, a baseline horizontal and of course the, the perspective grid, if you will, which I know a lot of people just absolutely cringe, especially new, new artists cringe when they hear perspective because it seems so technical and so difficult, yet if you don't learn it and kind of build it into your into your repertoire, into your, your daily use, it's uh, it's something that people will notice. It, it becomes blatantly obvious when someone does not understand some of the basics of perspective. Um, so this is two-point perspective. I scribed a couple of lines that in theory these would go off to a vanishing point somewhere off on the horizon, and then in the other direction, a couple of vanishing, a couple of lines that will meet at a vanish point, vanishing point in the other side, and then my vertical lines. And this helps you build a space not only on the page but in your mind, just out of muscle memory, if you will, for where your object is going to be located. Now, I'm doing this with the benefit. I know these are very light markings. I try to keep it light, which is one of the benefits of using a standard ballpoint pen. It actually allows you to go very light um, so that when you're drawing things over it, it doesn't completely take over the scene. You, you will sometimes see a halo effect of this perspective grid on your, your drawing afterwards, even if you take it all the way to being finished, but that's actually okay. Um, some of the concept artists that Industrial Light and Magic used on the Star Wars movies, if you look at Doug Chang, for instance, and some of the prequel movies, and then later on, some of the coolest sketches, you can very clearly see that there was a perspective grid involved in making it, and they just kind of leave those in there, and it's, that's perfectly fine. So the, the other thing that this grid will do is help you set up the, um, the dynamic of your of your vehicle or spaceship. If it's a much larger ship, a gigantic fortress-like thing, like a, a battle star or some of the Star Destroyers in Star Wars, you really want an aggressive, um, I'll just pull it down here, you would want a very aggressive vanishing point that, especially if it's something like a battle star, because it is so far away that you want these points to go pretty, to vanish pretty hard. Your viewpoint would be someplace sitting in space on it and you'd be looking at this thing that would kind of be sitting out here and just by the vanishing points of the various components of it you'll be your mind will say hey this is something that's very far away whereas if it were something static and much closer like say the millennium falcon which would be possibly much closer i would leave this more of an open open box where you could establish your your various points and a nice center line now, my personal weakness here is that in some of these, just drawing them off the top of my head, I can probably get, get close to them, but I know people who are very particular about the design and shape of the Falcon, so I'm not even going to go too far with this, but the point here being that this is a much smaller vehicle. This is more of your RV size vehicle, if you will. So yes, the, the Winnebago sized vehicle versus something that would be the size of several city blocks or several miles of highway. 
Um, that was way at the top of the screen, too. Oh, that's really not fair. One of the other things I don't like about the bigger sketchbooks, they're huge. Um, so anyway, yeah, it, this will help you define the size and shape and position, if you will. Um, it gives you some character to the, the drawing itself. And in this particular one, I honestly have no, I, I have kind of a rough idea of what I'm going to draw spaceship wise on this, but we'll just kind of go through it and, and uh, see what we end up coming up with. So it's important to sort of get an idea of where your center point is. So I will oftentimes give that a little bit more, a little bit more definition. And the reason for that is when you're drawing a vehicle, center point vertical, center point horizontal, when you're drawing a vehicle or hardware in general, everything to the left and right of this needs to be reasonably symmetrical. Even if you're doing an asymmetrical object, it's important to have some reference point, if you will. And I would, uh, let's see, I think this is gonna be something that's a little bit smaller maybe than the Millennium Falcon. Let's do sort of a science fiction-y near future. I'm, in my mind, I'm kind of going something that'd be closer to like Ron Cobb, James Cameron um, vehicle. Something that might be landing on LV-426 and attacking uh, colonies of, of aliens that are just uh, getting way too far ahead of themselves and eating colonists. Um, so I'm just adding what looks like kind of a little uh, a flight cockpit here and I'm just loosely trying to get some shapes in and this one's pretty much in the center but I will actually kind of make this a little bit asymmetrical we'll have a little bit of a side projection on the side here coming forward that holds some kind of a instrument pod associated with the vehicle and so now I have a module that is roughly, yeah, it's a little further to the right than to the left, so I'll give it a little bit more, a little bit more hardware here. There. So this rough shape is going to be the center of our spacecraft. And if you look at your center line, which is going through the center here and down through the middle, in theory, all of these this distance right here should be roughly the same as this distance. Actually, this distance should be a bit more because it's all receding away, so um, you can make corrections as you go. There we go. And I'm still trying to keep my pen light, but at the same time trying to get some, some lines in that I can work with later. Now let's give it some, some arms. So we're going to bring this out as a sort of an attachment point here. And I'm not really going to see much of this ramping shape on the other side, although I do want to establish how far it is. So right over here. So yeah, I'm not really going to see it, but the attachment point is right there. Instead, I'm going to draw this out in a... We're going to give this thing a pretty aggressive wing. And now I'm going a, about a 45 degree angle away from the middle of our perspective cube. And I'm just going to kind of come out here and give this thing a crazy arm. This is actually based on a ship that I did draw for my spaceship a day years ago, but I liked it and I'm just going to kind of keep working with something that I did work on, but there we go. And instead of it coming flushing back, we'll give it a little bit of an angle in the back here. All right, so that is one half. Now the other half is going to start basically here connection point will be back in there. So now using the same perspective lines, I need to establish points like the, the tips, if you will, the tips of this and the end of it. And I'm constantly turning this because your arm has a natural arc to it. So if I hold this pen down and do a sweep, I'll have a natural line to it. And just by turning the the board you can or your surface you can adjust it and go from there and it's a little bit better than trying to worm in too much with your wrist um, so you can get some decent straight lines when you need them okay 
So let's go ahead back from finding this point here to this attachment point there. That kind of comes down a little bit. And then I'm going to, this is a straight line. So I'm going to bring it forward straight line in this perspective. Right up there. So that's effectively the same point as this. Now you basically want to match this angle on this side over here and bring it down far enough so that it, oh, keep doing that. There we go. Alrighty. That looks pretty good from that side. And on this back end, which is also kind of straight, be back on this point here. There we go. Now, this is actually kind of falling away. So, oh, actually, it went to a little bit too far. So, actually, this is almost going to look like a knife edge of this wing right here. So we're going to get to see some of the detail on the back side of it, and maybe there's a supporting structure that it pulls it up. Maybe it's not just... I mean, in theory, I could be actually plotting all of these points uh, across to figure out where all of that is, but it's actually going to, it's going to kind of knife edge. This thing, looking at it from the front, would be a double section front end here with little winglets, and then these slabby wings here, Whoop. Ah. which now that I'm looking at it looks remarkably a lot like what they were doing with a spaceship called the La Sirena, La Serena, La Serena, that is being featured in Star Trek Picard right now. So maybe that was on my brain. I've been watching the show quite a bit. I'm not sure. Um, okay, so now we got some basic elements of this thing in here, and now we kind of have some fun detailing and maybe on the top of this instead of leaving it flat let's uh let's make it really aggressive so i'm going to give it a give it a supporting fin structure and let's see i'm going to bring it in right there there we go now uh, bring that back at an angle here there we are and sometimes these are just a real mess that's quite all right. So this thing's going to be a... We're going to give this a missile pack of sorts because I'm just I'm just in military sci-fi mode right now. And I could make this a, a straight missile pack, a, a box, if you will. Darn it, I got that one wrong. Oh, well. There's no mistakes. It's all happy accidents. Um, instead of going as a straight box, I'm going to go for something that's a little bit more more exciting. Um, all right. There we go. Uh, yes, the finale for Picard is tomorrow. And it's weird in, in this being sequestered by I, I'm getting I'm losing track of my days. I actually thought today was Thursday, which is very, very strange. Um, so honestly, a lot of this stuff is getting to be a little bit messy. If I were to actually take this drawing and present it to George Lucas himself, as a for instance, I would very likely take, I, I would I would transfer this to a new drawing to do the rendering, even with a lot of the other pieces. Um, that's just kind of the way it would actually go. I would have no trouble with that whatsoever. Um, but now that I kind of have the basic shapes in here, I'm going to kind of define these and using the same principle, keeping my arm straight, um, darkening these edges a bit, there we go. And because it's a pen, you have a little bit of range to it. Again, if I had just used a black marker, a fine line marker, you get one tone. You get that color in, or that black is usually a black ink. Whereas with this nice, with a ballpoint, you kind of have a little bit of, little bit of range to it. And I have a really cool shape on the front end of this guy that I would love to just bring over here, but I think I'm going to just mess it up. So maybe this was a little bit more than just a flat slab-sided thing. Maybe this had a bevel to it. And yes, if I were working in Photoshop on this thing, I'd be erasing as I go. That's There's just no question. One of these nights I'll do a digital drawing session, and uh, we'll just see how that goes from there. But right now, I don't know. I kind of like I kind of like the pen. So this wing, if you will, has probably got some some power to it. So we'll give it some nice cut detail through the back. Maybe this is a 
power radiating fin assembly of some kind. Not really sure. Details are subject to interpretation. Um, and of course, maybe it's actually got a, a painted stripe that comes across it. And if I were doing this with marker, maybe I would make this whole thing red. But in the meantime, since I don't have that, I'm just going to kind of half shade this on in here. So we're getting, we're getting some forms together, yes. And we will see about darkening this up. I, I focused a little too much on the wing here. I actually kind of like to try to define the rest of the shape before I go too far into that. But hey, it's fun. This is just for fun. You can do whatever you want to with it. There we go. Oh, I have I have plans for this side, so I'm gonna leave that a little bit lighter right now. Um, and then my little um, what's what's the word I'm looking for when it's across the top? Spine mounted, ventral mounted weapon system. <laughs> because we're space fa space fascists, we're gonna we're gonna have weapon systems. And I think I want this cockpit to be a little bit rounded here. Um, so when you're doing contours. I, go ahead and add them in. It helps you figure out what's going on with them. And I never quite figured out what was going on with the side up here. So maybe this actually is a kind of like a Deep Space Nine runabout. There's a little bit of an inlet here. There we go. And maybe this is actually a variable wing shape. There's actually a track that these things run on and maybe Maybe at some point the wings can actually deploy up instead of just down. Hard to tell. We can make it whatever we want to. Alrighty, um, so let's get some things going on over here. I, I like the idea that if you see a lot of military aircraft, they often have out the front a little pod that is that contains camera gear tracking instruments tracking radar and so forth so we're gonna give this one a little sphere that kind of wiggled the sphere in but a lot of times if you're just doing it you just do your circle do your circle get it in there but yeah I kind of wiggled this one in a little bit more so it's like this gigantic eye off the front of the vehicle that, you know, as one would have. So this thing's seeing out ahead, tracking all sorts of bad guys or alien critters of some sort. And now i got to think about the window of this thing, so this is going to give it a little bit of scale. Um, windows, doors, any of those things will help you determine visually how big this thing is, anyone looking at it. And a little side window. Bring this one down through the middle here. And this is where you can kind of have fun with it. Everyone's doing these crazy angles on windows. And all things in sci-fi are turning into triangular windows. And that's perfectly fine. So hint of the other side of it there. So now we have a little bit of this. I'm trying to fill this in with a darker color but yet indicate a bit of reflection. Since it is a window, it would have a bit of a reflection. There we go. So now you get to kind of have fun just doing all of your little details. So everything's got little greebly bits on the fronts and the sides. Got to add those in. And if I were taking this to a full rendering, I'm probably not going to take it to a full rendering since I, I swear all of my markers are dried. I've, I've had buckets of markers for years and every one of them is dead and I've never replenished them. Um, and I'm not about to go get into the markers that are owned by my daughters because, well, they're awesome and if I 
if I got a hold of them, I'd kill them in a minute, and that would just not be cool. All right. So let's give these front bits some things sticking out of them. I have no idea what these are. These could be gun barrels. They could be just little sensors. They could be tracking devices. It's so hard to tell. It's a science fiction vehicle of some kind. And you know, I'm looking at this and I realized I didn't really indicate anything like an engine on the back of it, so that's really kind of mean. So let's just give it a form back here. I'm imagining it's a flat box of sorts. So that would be in the back here. And I have a tendency to constantly draw things that look like jet engine turkey feathers, so I'm going to avoid that and give it something that would be kind of a flat. If I were to draw it at a different angle, a flat detail, maybe this would be a... sort of a dual jet ducted thing here. So, not exactly like turkey feathers, but pretty close. Give it some cowls. Yeah, that's my little that's my little attempt at a at a quick detail of what you're looking at back there. Alrighty. And so I got these flat sided pieces here, so it's okay to come in and kind of break them up with little panel lines, give them some bit of interest. Maybe this panel line's got a recessed uh, bit here, access doors. All of this brings these vehicles to life. Um, and if I were painting these, it, these would all be things that have highlighted edges on them. And I'll carry this stripe back over. I got a little heavy handed on it, but I do try to actually keep the keep the, the receding, the, the edges that are going away a little darker, um, which gives it a little bit more weight uh, than the light lines on top. And it, it might just be my, my being nervous, I'm being on camera and I was going a little heavy handed with it, but um, I, I find that it, it's, it's better to sort of pay attention to where you think the shadows are gonna fall and go heavier on those and lighter on the top surfaces. Unfortunately, now I'm just kind of digging right into the page to, to get this in here, so hey, oh well. Um, so here we've got our little... I, don't, I guess I'm not even sure what I would actually call this. A fleet support ship. And since this was going to be a missile rack, I've got to put little doors for all the missiles. So be careful what you wish for, because now you got to draw little doors for all your little missiles. There we go. So it, really, the intention of a drawing like this is supposed to be pretty quick. Um, so you could do a bunch of them. And... You know, if I were trying to iterate on some designs like I did for the book cover before, I would sit for maybe an hour and see if I could come up with, you know, a half a dozen, a dozen of these, um, just to kind of give some options, if you will. And that way you can kind of take a look at, at what, what where you're going with it. And maybe the same vehicle might have a different configuration altogether. Uh, maybe instead of it being a Maybe instead of it being uh, something that has wings on the side, maybe it's maybe it's vertical. So you've got your your front end cockpit with some drive section on the back, and coming up on the top would be sort of a this giant missile launcher thingy. And even though I'm not doing this with perspective lines, I'm trying to keep the idea of where these would be happening, things would be happening in perspective as I draw them. That way, although it's gonna collide with my other drawing there, 
and I'm trying to follow all of these shapes, all of these shapes on the opposite side here. Give it its whole scanner radar-y thing in the front here. Oops. So really, even though if you went in and analyzed this, you'd find it's not perfect, but at least it's kind of in the ballpark. Um, and then you can just deal these out, uh, detail these out to your heart's content, and you've basically got version number two ready to go. And, and just keep cranking on these until you have enough that you feel like you've exhausted the possibilities of things you'd want to do without going completely exotic uh, into things that you w wouldn't really, wouldn't fit the bill, if you will. So yeah, just some quick bits there. And really when it comes to doing drawings and sketches like this, um, I've probably just done what would be a warm-up exercise and then would go for the next hour working on a bunch of different pieces. Um, the important things though, of course, are to keep, keep your lines straight as you possibly can as you go. Otherwise, when you mess up, you really mess up. And the other things would be circles and ellipses. I am, um, I, uh, ellipses, of course, just basically what you would call an oval. Um, these will mess you up no matter what, because if you try to, if you do them badly, um, you're going to notice it. But most round objects, when you're drawing them in perspective, if I were to draw, well, gosh, this could be, if I were to draw a Zeppelin, for instance, you could probably get the basic shape of the thing. <laughs> yes, they are very much a challenge drawing them in perspective. Um, but getting these, getting these contours right, it's very, very easy to get them wrong. Ah, I remember a demonstration. So. The demonstration of why it's important to get an ellipse is if you're trying to draw an oven, a standard kitchen oven, you would have your basic, um, you draw a box. So here's your, here's your standard El Cheapo. This oven is in every, every apartment on the planet. A little back end here, all the buttons on it instead of up front, we, you know, it would be easy to get hold of. But across the top, you have four burners. Now, if I just came in here and, and drew a circle, drew an ellipse there, and drew one this way, you would immediately know that I'm looking at a cartoon version of this of this oven. Whereas if you went in and properly plotted in where your where your ellipse axes are, then it would actually start working in perspective and your elements would actually look correctly. Otherwise these things are pointing off at different angles and that's just no good. That would end up being like a um, the Salvador Dali version of your kitchen appliance, and that's just not where we're at here. But um, getting back to this thing in the middle, I was thinking as I was trying to come up with what would be a good thing to have today for a drawing or a painting, and I was going through some old, older uh, space paintings. The Chesley Bonestell era of the Collier's, for instance, moon landing, the, the things that were brought into movies like Destination Moon and uh, those sorts. Lots of steel rockets, stainless steel chromed rockets. And um, so that's going to be the subject of ours today. And I thought, well, drawing those is a little bit crazy. So I've got, if I'm going to draw one of these sitting just on the moon, the way SpaceX is trying to land these things on the moon, I've got my center axis here, and at each of these points, you'd want to be able to, if I, you want this arc here to match this arc here, which is um, a little bit painful because it's very easy to draw an arc in one direction and then the mirrored, the mirrored version of it won't quite match up, and that's what we're going to attempt here. So. Yes, I already started thinking of 50s. I, I love the 1950s era rockets. There's just something beautiful about them, about a chromed rocket. 
So I've basically taken off the center line and estimated the distance between here and here. Oh, that's a little closer. Same thing from here to here and from here to here. And now I've got a po points where if I roughly follow those points, I will have a reasonably close approximation and reasonably close symmetry uh, left to right. Elon seems to agree. Yes, I... I am very much looking forward to seeing the SpaceX Starship uh, actually fly. I, I think it's the most insane thing in the space program that I've seen in my lifetime. And uh, more power to him. I, I wish him luck. I, I, I think it's going to be pretty spectacular and uh, certainly game changing. Uh, although, I do have to laugh when I think about. When, when we did the moon landings, we had this little tiny thing. We did this little, you know, the, the, the lunar module was just this little dude. It's, it's this little bug of a spacecraft, all little antennas on it. And, you know, it had its little landing gear. I'm almost half cartooning this. It's this little tiny thing that puttered down with its with its engine and, and probably kicked up a few rocks. Some of them went pretty far. They went in all the different directions. But, and this is not out of scale. The, the SpaceX rocket is, is enormous. Actually, I think if I were to put it right next to it, it would basically be something along these lines right here. SpaceX and their, and their vehicles. I, I'm looking forward to seeing how those go. And anyway, we get back to our 1950s one here. I'm going to do the same thing down to the side that I did with the uh, the middle, and kind of plot my little side thrusters. Hopefully, trying to get this match this on up. And so, for those of you joining uh, from Maestron's stream, uh, thank you very much. I, I'm usually lurking on there, saying all sorts of crazy things. Uh, um, Smastron is a streamer that uh, does a lot of a lot of PUBG and he's got a really fun crowd and I usually keep them on in the background or on the side when I'm working on my book my book covers and some other bits um, so yeah thank you very much they may be disappointed not seeing him tonight but I'll uh, I'll find some phallic shapes shape space spaceships to keep their attention um, there here we go Cheers! Man Bear Pig, thank you very much. Alrighty. So, I want to transfer this to the painting. I, I won't be doing this. This thing's huge. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I dig these I dig these rockets that uh, when they designed them, I'm sure they had some good intentions, but I, I, I do question whether or not you want to send something that aerodynamic to, uh, to the moon. But that's quite okay. They look really great on screen. And it's re as you can see, it's real easy to get out of hand with the uh, uh, the size. This this engine's much larger than this one, but that's that's perfectly okay. And for those of you just joining, I'm about ready. To, I'm finishing up a drawing demonstration right now. Uh, just some loose sketches. And I'm going to be moving on to an actual painting, which becomes the the main part of the show. Finn, thank you very much. Alrighty. How terribly fun. And, uh, yeah, so... Cool. So really, just a, a lot of it, just a standard pen. I'll, sometimes I will go back to, I mean, with a drawing like this, you know, a little graphite can go a long way helping you define, define the shape. If you don't actually have a, uh, if you don't actually have markers handy, like all my dead dried up ones, you can come in here and just shade these guys up a little bit, just to give them a little bit of life and uh, really, um, a lot of times I, I enjoyed more so drawing with, with pencil and graphite than I did even with pen. Um, although the combination of the two really works out pretty nicely. 
Um, since these things are usually chromed, it's not just enough to give a shadow on the side. I usually like to add a little hint of a of a reflection, since there would technically be reflections in these vehicles if it was all chrome. And we're going to have some fun actually doing this in the uh, the painted version. And even though I've left all these little bits out here, we'll give it a little 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 moon background. <laughs> there we go. Sketchbook rocket ship. Very cool. Alrighty. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Also, catch my weekly stream over on Twitch every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Thank you.